Hello guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss um, things to do with electric vehicles. And our guest for today, she's called Janet. I will let her introduce herself. How are you? I'm fine, Joseph. How are you, sir? I'm very good. Thank welcome you. Welcome to our channel. Asante. Please introduce yourself and don't be conservative. You know, give your highest profile in the best words you can, or the places you have worked so that people can get to know you better. Thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity, viewers. My name is Janet, as you've heard from Joseph. I'm a mechanical engineer with 20 years of experience in manufacturing. I've worked with Kenya vehicle manufacturers for seven years, um, seven years with Kibo manufacturers of the Kibo motorcycle, and then uh, with Ban Manufacturing for four years now. So uh, through my 20 years of uh, working in manufacturing, uh, mm -hmm. the most exciting one has been the production of the electric drive, motorcycles and vehicles, mm -hmm. which was done at Opibus, which is uh, Rome now. Um, and the reason why that is, uh, that marks my 20 years of uh, working in manufacturing mm -hmm. is that uh, the world is turning greener. Everybody is trying to look into a greener and cleaner mm -hmm. future. So um, the, when you look at the current uh, vehicle industry, mm -hmm. the motorcycles have come in mm. in large numbers in East yes. Africa. Yes. And that's the common mode of transport that mm. is being used into the deeper mm. uh, rural areas. So uh, transitioning to um, the electric border mm. board has to be precise because mm -hmm. those are the large numbers that are emitting carbon mm. in East Africa. Mm. I think uh, everybody should be embracing the electric drives in terms of the vehicles, mm. but the largest number in terms of the border borders. Yes, so, and I will cut you short, but we'll continue with your with your statement okay so just my quick question do these electric vehicles work myself from where i stand because i work in the environment sector i want to see them work and you have you know you have had a lot of experience you know setting up rome which is one of the most popular brands on the road today you not like c20 bikes and not c5 rooms among them but my big question to you having been the person, you know, behind what people are using, pe behind what people are seeing on the road, do these electric vehicles work? Yes, the electric vehicles are working, and they are working very well for mm -hmm. those that have embraced it. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason being, number one, they are cheaper to run. In terms of fueling, you avoid the cost of fluctuating uh, mm -hmm. cost of fuel. Mm -hmm. That way you pay a very small bit, mm -hmm. like a 5% five, five per percent cost in running that mm -hmm. particular electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they are working? They are working. And uh, from your experience in manufacturing, what do you see as the biggest challenge of scaling up electric uh, vehicles in Kenya today? Okay, the, the largest challenge that we are facing is the development of the recharging infrastructure mm -hmm. for the vehicles and mm. the motorbikes mm. for example if your station if your vehicle is stationed in nairobi and you need to drive to nakuru and probably the limit of your battery is uh, 200 kilometers mm. you find that you need to recharge somewhere before mm. you arrive to nakuru mm. so um mm. the development of recharge network mm -hmm. has not developed mm -hmm. that's the biggest challenge that you're facing in kenya and um probably it's a challenge today mm -hmm. but in future someone will come in and inject the uh, infrastructure for recharging. Mm -hmm. So in that case, are we trying to, to bring too many vehicles without the charging infrastructure? Or in your assessment, do the number of vehicles you have on the road, the EVs on the road today, can they be supported by the existing uh, charging infrastructure? Or they should grow in parallel? And is that happening? Actually, they should grow in parallel. Mm -hmm. Same, the same that happened for the fossil, for the fuel-driven vehicles. Mm -hmm. The number of vehicles we have on the road are being supported by the existing petrol station. Mm -hmm. So it's exactly the same thing that should happen for the electric. Mm -hmm. The more the number of vehicles we have out here on the roads, mm -hmm. the more the recharging infrastructure that should be available. Mm -hmm. None should be ahead of the other, mm -hmm. and that is not the case here. Mm -hmm. But should be something that um probably the authorities mm. shouldn't look into mm. yes all right so there is this thing i had people talking about rage anxiety you know like even if your battery is full you start worrying about when will i charge next and where will you charge your next um, your next station will you find it actually or will you run out of out of power and i had that that's something that really affecting a lot of uh, you know taxi drivers especially the boda boda operators how would you 
like um, talk to boda boda people who are so much anxious about that rage anxiety because I had a lot of people would want to embrace it but that uncertainty of whether you will get a place to charge your battery when it is off it gives people a lot of fear. There is no any other way of eliminating the range anxiety rather than installing the recharging stations. Mm -hmm. Because if a border border person is supposed to be driving mm. to the car mm. and he knows that his battery is going to run out before before he reaches the car, mm. then it's obvious. Mm -hmm. It's human. Mm. He'll develop that anxiety and probably not take that business mm. and not put that money mm. in the pocket. Mm. So it means that the border border would be would be losing a lot of business mm. because he's not confident mm. with his uh, change. Mm. So the only way out of the anxiety is developing the recharge infrastructure. All right. So there is these two models that are now operating with the, especially the Buddha Bodas, when it comes to, to the battery ownership. So there are those companies like, uh, like Rome you have mentioned, they sell the battery, the motorbike with the battery. So there is full ownership and you can charge at home. And there are, there are these others who are selling a uh, battery as a service like Spyro and the rest. From your standpoint as, a, as an engineer, as a manufacturer advisor, like which is your most preferred? Because I get this question very frequently from people who want to buy electric bikes to get into Uber and to Bolt. If I am to advise them, which one works best for the interest of the end user? Forget about the manufacturer for, at this point. For the end user, the business model where the battery belongs to the owner or to the manufacturer, that's the best uh, business scenario. Reason being, that battery needs maintenance, mm -hmm. that battery needs support of the recharge station. So it means if the battery belongs to the, to the manufacturer of the motor, motor, motorbike, mm -hmm. that manufacturer will make sure that there is a the infra, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But then if he gives you the battery and the motorbike, it's a, he, he does not have that responsibility of making sure that, that there is uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. and the skill to repair those batteries. So he'll mm -hmm. make sure that there is infrastructure distributed all the way mm -hmm. and there is a skill provided mm. at those points where he has the infrastructure provided. So it works because the responsibility of having that motorbike to run does not end. Mm. It continues. It does not manufacture a bike and dispose it to you. Mm -hmm. But then the responsibility of making sure that your operational mm. also remains with the manufacturer of that bike. Mm. So it gives the, the, the operator at least an upper hand yes. because the manufacturer has to be part of the game. Mm. That sounds interesting, but on this other hand, some people will say um, the swap model is a bit expensive because I did some questioning here and there, and I found that when you take your battery to a swap station, when it is zero, then to, re to get another one that is full, you pay around 260, but when you are independent with your battery, you charge at home, you will use lesser electricity maybe three tokens that would cost you around 90 shillings. So you see, in the long term, probably the cost of ownership of that battery through the, the rental model is extremely expensive because you are refilling at probably twice, twice the amount. Um, it, depends, it depends on the business that that particular motorbike is running. Hmm. Look at it like this. Because if someone has to go and return at home, it means they don't mind about their downtime. Oh, yes, I see. They don't mind about their, about their downtime. Number mm. two, they are operating that motorbike within mm. that home area. Yeah. Because, for example, you're supposed mm. to run from here to Dika Town mm. and then come back. Mm. You know, no, you cannot, you're not running within your home area. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's based on scenario. Number two, if the person is supposed to be doing delivery of parcels, they mm -hmm. don't have that one hour to, to wait for the to charge. Yeah. So it depends on the operations of that particular vehicle. Mm -hmm. So if the person finds that they can, they are, they are okay with losing one hour charging mm -hmm. or one hour going at home and waiting for it to charge, mm -hmm. you know, it may work for one person, but it may never work for another. Yes. So I would advise that one goes with the options that work for their business, mm -hmm. for the business that they're running mm -hmm. using that motorcycle. I agree with you, but also we know that... Um, Almost 99% of the electric Buddha Buddhas deployed on the road today are doing, you know, the gig economy and also the public service transport using the ride hailing. So those are guys who literally have no time to sit and wait for a battery to charge. They want, if it's down, you swap within a minute and, okay. and you keep going. All right, so Janet, I think um, there is so much that we can discuss, yes. but I don't know what you can say to anyone out there who is skeptical about electric vehicles. Um... To people are, about, are skeptical about the electric vehicles, mm. 
electric is the way. Everyone is moving to electric. We could mm. have our challenges at now in mm. 2024, mm. but five years mm. from now, all this infrastructure will come in place mm. and you have to be part of that journey. So we enjoy the journey mm. with all its bumps, mm. but in five years, it will be a smooth run. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank and you. we look forward to hosting you again on our channel. My pleasure. Asante. Karibu <laughs> Anguke,